Hello and welcome to this presentation entitled Forget the Needle, Focus on the Haystack. My name is Dean Ferrando and I'm one of the senior systems engineers here at Tripwire. I've been with Tripwire for a little over six years now and I've been fortunate enough to have held a few different roles here. In one of my previous lives, I was a member of the Tripwire professional services team and that role gave me the opportunity to see how some customers, in my experience, use the same processes differently such as the Golden Build methodology. Although the premise was ultimately the same, each customer would focus on certain areas differently. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about how most companies spend their time and money focusing on the events of interest. In other words, the haystack. My presentation is going to focus around four main topics. The problem. The problem companies are currently facing with regard to threats such as malware the approach most companies adopt to try and mitigate the threat, the methodology they currently adopt to detect events of interest, as well as a possible alternate way to sift through the data, and finally, the end result, where it with a few small changes in processes could help reduce the noise or haystack. Let's start with the problem. What is malware? Why does it exist? And who does it ultimately affect? As a lot of us know, malware, or malicious software, is any software used to disrupt computer operations, to gather sensitive information, or gain access to private computer systems. There are over 1 million new sample codes released every day, which explains why current systems, or at least methodologies, can't give up. It has been said that by the year 2020, there will be over 50 billion devices being used worldwide, and security solutions alone will cost the UK, on average, up to £2 billion. Now, knowing what malware is, is only one of the hurdles. Understanding why malware exists will help you focus on what you need to secure within your business. Malware is developed for a lot of different purposes, but as it, at its core, its focus is to be stealthy. It is intended to steal information or spy on computer users for an extended period of time. Mainly without the knowledge, or in some cases, it may be designed to cause harm, often as something like sabotage or even to extort payments. A good example of this way it was used for sabotage would be something like the stuck next worm. This particular malware was designed to seek out and destroy specific industrial equipment in certain countries. Another main aspect that people don't usually associate with malware is around technology advantages. Imagine if you will, you run a company who is on the leading edge of technology development. You have spent millions creating products, getting staff in place, even owning premises. Now, a rival company manages to plant a specifically written piece of malware to sit within your environment and monitor any traffic or even files transferred between your research department and your product management team. Any traffic sent between the two departments could be intercepted and stored either locally until a predetermined time to send the information out, or in the case of an insider threat, a staff member who just downloads the information and carries it out manually. Now, all the rival company has to do is develop a version of that product themselves without investing the millions you've already invested and just make sure that they are first to market. As we know, being first to market is a major competitive advantage. Now I know most of you are already aware of, the, of these scenarios or something along the same lines, but it is worth knowing that this actually does happen and is a real world threat. Which leads me into the target audience. Who is actually at risk? Everyone. This points to the familiar saying of it's not just if you get breached, but when you get breached. Let's now talk about the approach. What is the haystack and what is the proverbial needle? Let's quickly talk about what makes up the proverbial haystack in this presentation. The examples I have listed in my slide are only some of the examples, such as the event logs or file hashes. But the idea is still the same. Effectively, any data that you have to sift through in order to find an activity within your IT infrastructure could be considered your haystack. What is the needle? Well, the proverbial needle, needle in this case is any event or suspicious activity created as a result of malicious software being run within your infrastructure. This could be something like a known malicious hash of an infected file or events of interest such as far failed login attempts followed by a successful login attempt. Then there is size. This is ultimately what I'm going to focus on um, over the next few minutes. Size is the reason so much time and money is wasted on detecting or finding the proverbial needle in the haystack. 
A lot of companies are under the impression that as their estate or haystack grows, so should the level of effort around detecting the malicious threat. This does not necessarily need to be the case. And let's talk about why. This brings us to the methodology, how most companies are currently approaching the haystack. So, how do the majority of companies look for malware? Most companies that invest in security, and in particular detecting malicious activity, are facing spiraling IT security costs. This is due not only to the number of vulnerabilities being released or exploited on a daily basis, but also by the number of new malware codes being released, as I mentioned earlier. More than 1 million new malware codes being released is a significant number on a daily basis. The reason for the spiraling costs is due to the manner of the approach. Now, let's just be clear, all these approaches do need to be in place, but it's the amount of effort that I'm looking at addressing. The approach of hiring additional staff members is still viable in some instances, but as most of you already know, no matter how many people you hire, you will never be able to filter through all the data manually by hand. Thus bringing up the approach of requiring specialized software to assist, especially in this regard. You will notice that the cost starts spiraling when you factor in that each new member of staff requires their own PC, their own login, uh, inf login details, infrastructure, as well as the cost of the actual software itself, and potentially any new um, server infrastructure that needs to be purchased on the back of that software. That is not even factoring in the probability that the new staff members would require some form of training on the new software that you've just purchased. In most cases, the training provided by the vendors themselves do not even cover the advanced aspect of event detection and correlation. Granted, some event intelligence will be provided out of the box, but usually there still be a requirement of some custom work to be done. This usually warrants the need for vendor-supplied professional services, again, of course, at a cost. Now, assuming that you're happy with the above approach and that the additional cost it, it, it falls within your bracket, studies show that there's currently a lack of security experts in the industry at the moment. In fact, they estimate that there are around 1 million unfulfilled security jobs in the market today. This is where I would like to take some time and focus on my main topic, reducing the haystack. What I'm going to talk about is nothing new. It has been and still is adopted by most companies, but it's either not being used effectively or not being used for multiple scenarios. What I'm referring to is the golden build approach. Most companies use the golden build methodology mainly for migration and testing from a pre-production environment to a production environment, or even just for full environment rollouts. Now, utilizing that infrastructure within your malware detection process could drastically reduce the amount of effort and even cost that I mentioned earlier. If you think about the benefits of what a golden build methodology can give you, you can start to understand the reason so many companies have adopted some form of this already. Effectively, what they are looking to achieve is a consistent baseline. For example, if you know that of your 100,000 files you are monitoring on one of your critical servers for malicious code, effectively being your haystack, you can quickly eliminate 90,000 of those files as they identically match the 90,000 files on your golden build. All you have to now focus on is the remaining 10,000 files, thus reducing the current approach methodology almost tenfold. Now I know these numbers are not exact, but you get the idea that having a consistent reference image or server can be a huge time and effort saver. However, there are a few caveats that you need to make sure you adhere to. Number one, and this is critical, make sure the golden build server or image is taken offline during non-scan events. For example, once you've created your golden image, you have run all your patches and fixes and are happy that the image is becoming the reference starting point, then you need to make sure that you take that reference server offline when it's not being used. This eliminates the potential risk of malware finding its way onto the reference server and compromising the whole process. Number two, make sure the golden build is consistently updated and patched. Don't forget, once it's updated, take it offline. You'll need to be, you'll, you will be surprised how many companies do not run regular patching on their critical servers. Statistics show that 85% of all breaches could have been avoided by companies by simply patching their software on a regular basis. 
the end result. This section highlights the golden build process in a little bit more detail. The images you're about to see are just a graphical representation of the methodology I've just explained. Working from left to right, the first image you see on your left would be your haystack of information. The second Im image would be your golden build, or, or reference survey if you will. Taking all the information from the first image, overlaying it onto the second image, removes most of the surface area of the haystack. The third image, the last one on the right, now reflects the results of the overlay. You can now easily see that the idea that once the bulk of the haystack has been reduced, it makes it a lot easier to find the needle, or at least reduce the amount of data you have to sift through in order to find the actual event of interest. Finally, let's talk about business benefits and why we should bother. As we all know, business benefits are key. I mean, what's the point of doing anything if the business does not benefit in some way? The nice thing about altering your existing golden build process is that it should be relatively low cost. Some of the benefits are things such as increasing your company's efficiencies by making it possible to roll out new systems or even being able to migrate systems from a pre-production to a production system relatively risk-free and with a high level of confidence about the security posture of those systems. Another benefit could include reducing the cost and even effort involved remediating the systems that do not fall within the company's security policies. Or even perhaps just being able to bring a system that has crashed back up within minutes by comparing the current con system configurations with that of the golden build, effectively reducing the mean time to repair. And finally, being able to do more with less. When I say less, this could be things like less manpower, less hardware, less software. I'm sure you get the idea. Now, being able to reduce the haystack is good. But as I have mentioned already, you do still require the need for a software solution to be able to monitor and collect the baselines in order to compare the monitored devices against the unauthorized golden builds. This information can easily be detected by using not only Tripwire Enterprise, but also Tripwire RP360 from a vulnerability perspective. Once baselines have been established, scheduled, or even real-time checks have been run, and changes have now been detected, Tripwire Enterprise can alert, respond, or advise based on your company's best practices. In parallel to that, Tripwire's vulnerability solution, the RP360, could be used to find weaknesses or vulnerabilities on the devices being monitored in order to assist with reducing the 85% breach risk that I mentioned as well. A lot of you might already be familiar with Tripwire and our product sets from way back, but might not be familiar with some of our latest developments, especially when it comes to our portfolio of product extensions. Tripwire has spent a lot of time and investment to integrate our product set with third-party solutions. For example, in the Threat Cloud space, we're now able to work with third-party Threat Cloud vendors such as Palo Alto, Lastline, Checkpoint, and actually a few others as well. So just to clarify, for those of you who might not be familiar with what a Threat Cloud actually is, what this means is that with your reduced haystack, you can now detect the file changes with Tripwire Enterprise, send the file change information, the hash, or even in some cases the actual file, to the Threat Grid for analysis. The Threat Cloud provider will then analyze the file or the hash for any known threats, and once analyzed, they can then feed that information back into Tripwire Enterprise and alert you of the status of the file itself, whether it's suspected threats or even not in some cases. This whole process can be set up to run automatically, and again, with a reduced haystack, you can feel confident that the amount of data going through your network is manageable. A lot of customers have branches or offices around the world, but all the data threats are managed from one central location. So having the ability to reduce the haystack is vital. Let me quickly run over an example of one of our current customers' configurations and how they configured the process from start to finish. So they built the golden server, they patched it to the latest security policy that was possible. They then created their baselines using Tripwire Enterprise. They then created the Golden Build reference file from the Golden Build reference server. Then they took the Golden server offline. Now this process is something they follow for each and every new Golden server environment they set up. For example, they have one for Windows, they have one for Red Hat, and so on. Now on a daily basis, they have the system 
or their systems configured to run through the following scenarios. They run IP360 scans on their servers and detect that it has a vulnerability. IP360 then informs Triple Enterprise of the risk level, and Triple Enterprise then tags that server as a potential high risk. Triple Enterprise then runs a forensic scan of that risk server and detects all the changes. Triple Enterprise again then automatically runs the changes that are detected against the golden server reference file. All changes that match the file are automatically promoted, and then they become the new baseline. Any changes that do not match are then sent through to the threat cloud for further analysis. The threat cloud then, becomes, then, then comes back and informs all the files that are known to be good or malicious. Triple Enterprise then alerts either via emails, reporting, dashboards of, of the known malicious file or potential of the malicious files. The customer then does a manual user intervention to determine what needs to be done with those potential malicious files. And in some of the environments, not all of them, as, as, as an additional option, they then run an auto-remediation script as well on the infected servers. The auto-remediation script, in, in, in this example here, kills this process ID or, or malicious software. Um, and in, in some of their environments, they're only running this on a test environment because they don't want their production boxes to be automatically fixed. Now, I just explained how one of our current customers is using the golden build methodology with both Triple Enterprise and RP360. However, they are still having to do manual intervention when it comes to looking at changes that are not auto-promoted, either by failing the threat analysis or which do not fall part of the golden build image. As you can imagine, this can be a time-consuming process. Of course, depending on the number of servers, the number of files being monitored, even the number of changes on each of those files, and even the frequency of those changes, can all add up to additional man hours to look, to look through the data and verify each change to determine if it's an authorized or an unauthorized change. Now, in most organizations that have some form of golden build methodology, there's usually also an equivalent change management process as well. I say usually, but that's not always the case. In this case, of the customer having a change management process and in turn a ticketing system to maintain and track those changes would mean that all expected, in other words, authorized changes should already be captured and be visible in a business perspective. Now you would assume that as Tripwire is able to detect the actual changes made on the device, it would make logical sense to try and match that change against any part of the business that has a record of an expected change. This is why our ticketing system integration was developed. Tripwire does put a lot of effort into listening to our customer base, and actually this request was one of those features that was born out in the field. Tripwire had found that most of our customers had some form of ticketing system and were duplicating the effort required to both capture the expected change and in their ticketing system, and then for some, someone to capture the actual change itself in the ticketing system again. As our presentation is about reducing the haystack, I felt that this would be a perfect Tripwire extension to mention in, the, in this presentation as this would help a lot of current customers, even future customers, reduce the amount of effort when it comes to man hours. The slide deck shows the general flow of a Tripwire enterprise with the ticketing system of choice. If you have a look at that slide in front of you, the first thing we need to do is first is pick up the change. The change occurs. Then Tripwire enterprise detects the change then via our API, and don't forget, this whole process is automated. We connect to the ticketing system of choice and look for a comparable reference point. So for example, some customers are happy to just use a server's host name as a comparable reference point, meaning that should a change be detected on server, let's say, 123, and there is a valid ticket open for server 123, then all changes are promoted. Now this approach does inherit some risk as you might be promoting a bad or unauthorized change. Now, some customers have pushed this to its limit by looking for actual line changes for each server. For example, if server 123 now had two changes, Triple Enterprise could then do two separate lookups within the ticketing system. We could look for the actual changes on that server. Now, of course, this sounds ideal. However, this is dependent on how you currently use your ticketing system. To do this approach would mean that each expected change was captured either as its own ticket or at least individually against its own field. Now, having integration in place does not only mean that you can now check for tickets that already exist, 
but you're also able to raise tickers using Tripwire as well. So granted, certain permissions will need to be given and certain criteria are only achievable depending on your ticketing system of choice. But this feature would again help with reducing the amount of effort required from a man-hours perspective as well as reducing the remediation effort should the system go down. As Tripwire would create a ticket when a change is detected, should the server go down, it would merely be a case of lo logging into the ticketing system to see if there are any open tickets that have been recently created by Tripwire. You'll then be able to allocate the tickets to the correct department or management for approval, even if in, even, or even be in place to see exactly what has changed prior to the server going offline. Now, this scenario is dependent on a few things, such as real-time being configured, but the process flow is achievable, and hopefully by now you get the idea that it, Tripwire is extremely flexible. Having a good golden build methodology and process flow is one thing, but if you're not able to keep a track and verify the actual changes made on the golden builds, then keeping the integrity of the whole process is virtually impossible. And, as I've already shown, this is where security tools such as Tripwire Enterprise and IP360 does really help. As most of you might already know, Tripwire does have another product within their security suite called Tripwire Log Center. Although I've not spoken about this product, it would be vital that you, Mr. Customer, have some form of SIM or SIM tool in place as well. As I've mentioned, with regard to integration with our ticketing system, Tripwire Enterprise also offers an extension that provides the functionality to forward any events of changes uh, to third-party SIM tool, such as Splunk or ArcSight, or even via internal integration with Tripwire Log Center. Having this changed data not only being analyzed from a threat cloud perspective, as well as a ticketing or authorized perspective, but also from a correlating perspective, such as the file fail login attempts followed by a successful login, as I've mentioned, really does provide a full security perspective of all the changes, good or bad, that are happening within the IT infrastructure. The integration of all these product sets really does make it easier to find any malicious intent within the monitored environment. Should you need any additional information on Tripwire Enterprise, IP360, or even TLC, Tripwire Log Center, please feel free to download a copy of the white papers from within the Resource Center after this presentation. Now, to avoid recapping everything I've just spoken about, I figured it would be better just to offer you some final key takeaways. Some of these might seem simple or even self-explanatory, but I think they're all worth remembering and are worth adopting as soon as possible. Number one, golden builds are critical. A lot of companies see golden builds as useful but not critical. Or if they do, they find that they are not using them as effectively as they could. I would recommend spending some time making sure your processes are done in place and working in line with your current business processes. Number two, patch, 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 patch. I mentioned earlier that all of the breaches that happen, 85% of those could have been avoided purely by patching alone. Just by patching, you're reducing your risk factor dramatically and are making yourself a harder target for attackers. If you think about it, why would they spend time trying to break into the remaining 15% of your risk bracket when all they have to do is potentially exploit your competitor's 85% risk. Of course, assuming your competitors don't patch as well. Finally, and probably the biggest point to my presentation is, if you're going to adopt the Golden Bull methodology or even alter your current process, please make sure you take the reference services offline. The whole premise of having a reliable reference point hinges on the fact that the golden images are in a good and clean known state at all times. On that note, on behalf of myself and the whole Tripwire team, I just want to thank you for your time and attention. Hopefully you have learned a few valuable tips and tricks and are able to put some of those things you have learned into practice in your own environment. Please remember to download some of our reference documents from the Resource Center. If you haven't already, grab yourself a free coffee voucher from the virtual coffee shop. You will have to complete one of our surveys, but it might still be worth your time. Thanks again and goodbye.